This is GA Center. Your look at the Grand Arena Championships of content creators from around the globe. Here are your hosts, Flair from Gaming Embers and the Nev from the Escape Pod Cast. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of GA Center. We are at week 17. We are into our final two months of the season, and oh, the month before the final month. And it's 3v3. Some people love it, some people hate it, but it's always, always, always interesting. And this one is no different because uh, it's 3v3 with four GLs. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be great, isn't it? It's going to be fun. And, Just, uh, you know... Um, hey, hey, so is, that, is that fun? Is that emphasized for some people? Uh, well, I mean, when you look at the uh, when you look at the scores, for, I mean, let's all right, let's be honest. The first week is always a bit of a doozy, um, unless you have like some hideous RNG like crashes and dodge mm. cities and stuff like that. But uh, or you mostly... go against super super duper tryhards. Oh yeah, one. or you get super duper tryhards or people that just think, you know what, I, I, I've got. 20 relics and i'm just gonna let it auto deploy and see what happens so uh yeah everything on defense everything <laughs> on defense it's uh yeah that's just the way it is unfortunately for some round and but crumbles. we will talk about them as we get to them show 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 so so i'm uh, my enunciation is terrible this evening um must get more let me do my into. usual spiel yeah, you do your usual spiel. <laughs> All right, guys. That, of course, today's episode of GA Center. Any follows, uh, bits, cheers, subs, anything like that. We will recognize those at the end of the episode. Do know that we appreciate it. We love your all's freaking faces. But uh, our moderators in chat will recognize those. Otherwise, we've got a show to get on. Indeed. First, uh, first week with 3v3. Let's get cracking right on into it, shall we? Oh, yes. And we are starting straight off the bat with Commander Cody rocking out with a 3 0. First one with a triple crown. An excellent, excellent job. Uh, okay, let's, let's be real. There's really nothing much we have to talk about here. Absolutely no problems in, uh, in week one. His uh, dude tried to mirror bugs and lost miserably. And he just stopped after that. Round two, opponent only did four troop battles, cleared the ships, and just stopped. Round three uh, holds with his Bosk, Mando, and Grief team and his uh, Solid Adventure Spirit and Talia securing him a win. Excellent job. 3-0, triple crown for Commander Cody. And Brainkill with a very uncharacteristic 2-1. Dude usually goes 3-0. Uh, I mean, he was on for a triple this week. Uh, flawless victory in round one. Nice clean win in round two. But a DNS in round three didn't show. And we don't know why, because we didn't get a report. So, two and one for Brain Kill this week. And who knows? Another three and zero. Let's let's be honest. This is kind of to expect with Bulldog. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Round one. Uh, Bosk bounty hunters lost against Newt Separatists, so we had to clean that up with a Genite Raven. Um, but his gas got a hold, and General Grievous is still standing after two attempts preventing an enemy full clear. Round two, he had to do three attempts against a Padme GK GMY team. Uh, four attempts against Darth Revan and uh, Bastila Jedi still standing, preventing a full clear for him. But his opponent only did two battles, then lost against General Grievous, and then stopped. Who knows what happens after that? Round three, three attempts against an Endurance fleet, but he still got the full clear nonetheless. Opponents only beat his Asaz Adventurous Night Sisters. Uh, General Grievous standing after three attempts, shock after one attempt, and. That's it. That's all she wrote. Three and zero for Bulldog. Infinum with a three and zero triple whammy this week. Didn't get the crown because of that one loss. Nice easy round one for Infinum this week. His opponent stopped attacking after clearing the bottom territories. Just stopped. 
uh, Infinum picked up the flawless victory. Round two was slightly harder uh, as his opponent got the uh, full clear but failed in three battles. Uh, unfortunately for Infinum, he lost a battle this round and that's what cost him the triple crown. Still got the full clear, but that's what cost him the tri the triple crown. Round three, back to business, as he flawless victoried his opponent for the whammy and uh, picked up a double territory hold thanks to a C3PO and Chewy and Chupio. So uh, always makes a victory nice and sweet when you get a couple of holds. There is division four with you know who at the top because the dude just never loses. Just, uh, just no, and it would take, it would take him like not logging in to to change it. Yeah, yeah. If if we ever report an Owen three, it's because he forgot to join or he got glitched out. Now, if something did happen, Commander Cody, actually Commander Cody and Infinim both have him on banners. Yeah, they would. So he needs to make doubly, triply, quadruply you know, everyone sure. Everyone else has him on banners. Mm -hmm. He just has them on wins. Yeah. Okay, let's but, uh, move on to... Oh, sorry, mate. You're going to say something? Oh, oh no. I was going to say, are we, we, we moving on? Yep, moving on to Div 3. Yep, moving on into Div 3. And we're starting off with the Lone Gunman going 3 and 0. Oh, uh, Padme, round 1, taking 2 attempts to, to kill. Newt Gunray taking 2. General Grievous taking 2. Thankfully, his Darth Revan stood after 3 attempts and his negotiator taking two attempts to knock out of the sky. Round two was a full clear one shot with his Darth Revan taking three attempts to kill. Padme standing after three, preventing a full clear. Round three, he did have to two tap a crew first order team and malevolence, um, but his Mon Mothma getting a hold and Karth Old Republic getting two holds and Old Ben, Spirit, and R2 getting a hold, preventing a full clear as well. Three and oh for the lone gunman. Stone. Oh, another two and one. Uh, round one was a win, but ugh, he missed the full clear due to too many double and triple taps, unfortunately. Uh, round two was better as he uh, got the full clear, despite a few losses here and there because of uh, failed solos. But uh, yeah, full clear was still there. Round three was the loss, unfortunately, despite actually being a quite good round. Um, his opponent went second and took advantage of going second, and he eked out a victory by five banners. So, uh, yeah, unlucky end to the week. Two and one for Stone. On to Renard the Fox, our favorite German fox, going three and oh this week, also with a triple crown. Um, good number of triple crowns this week. Uh, round one, he said, full clear one shot his opponent's uh, challenging defense. And passed with a lot of luck, and Malik in the front front row to reach fleets. Opponents cleared the upper row and stuck on lower front wall. Round two, opponent set a light defense. He got the one shot full clear, and his opponent struggled on his lower front wall a few times and couldn't clear the lower rear row. Round three, his opponent set an even lighter defense, uh, and same result as the first two rounds. Opponent couldn't get past his bottom front wall. Uh, and he goes quite surprised that opponents with good relic offense teams couldn't pass lower rows, lower teams. Luckily, none of, uh, none of us were his opponents as he had to get used to uh, the flow with 3v3. So 3 0, triple crown for Renard the Fox. Moyo with a 2 and 1. Oh, tough pill for Moyo this week as the triple was ripped from him in round one mm. by nine banners. Mm. Oh, the single single digit banner losses really suck. I mean, they don't suck as much as a one banner loss, but single digit banner losses are horrible. Mission and ban Mission and Zalbar caused that pain. Carthanasi took the Mission Zalbar. No, you will not pass. Full clears in round two and round three saved the week, but with the uh, triple gone, it was scant consolation. Unfortunately, two and one for Moyo. All right, and next up, we've got ourselves Andy. Andy? Yes, yes. yes. Andy, Beats. Andy Beats. Two and one. Sorry, I, I had to move on my PowerPoint. Uh, two and one. Round one was an auto deploy that he got to deal with, so he didn't really have much issues there. He, he still got the win there. Round two was his loss. Uh, he 
just did not have the did not have the stuff, didn't have the tools to get past a, a very stout defense. And uh, round three was his win, and he goes a little further in detail here. Uh, misplaced Night Sisters against a relic crew team. He had to go in for a cleanup with Basilashan Fallen, Wampa, and Hoda. It wasn't looking good, a lack of damage. It was looking like he was going to time out when Wampa started ramping up and eventually took out crew. Wasn't expecting it, but he's going to take it, getting a full clear win in that round. Two and one for Andy Beads. V for Vendetta. And we just had the 5th of November recently as well, so uh, very apt. Vendetta picked up a triple that uh, nearly wasn't, which makes what he did this week more impressive. Well, I think it was impressive. Rounds one and two were wins which, you know, we've come to expect. But round three, he faced a GL Ray. He is in Div 3, though, remember. Um, and yes, we have seen GL Rays in Div 3 before, but it's it's rare. So for one of our competitors to face a GL Ray in Div 3, kind of sucks. Seven battles later, he stood victorious. And polished off the rest for a full clear and an amazing triple. 3-0 to Vendetta. And rounding out our Div 3 coverage is Marco going 3-0 this week. Um, and as he put it, he got some easy full clears. Uh, round one and two were both just easy full clears, no problems at all. Um, round three, got a full clear as well. A little bit harder, though. And uh, he, he likes to mention, as a side note, he completed every period, single period, feet period, I could complete. I'll regret that next week as, as he's getting ready to go into the Chromium Nightmare. <laughs> so 3 0 for uh, Syndicate Games, also known as Marco. And there is Div 3, and atop sits Vendetta. And you're probably wondering hang on a minute, Vendetta sitting on the top all by himself. Where's Olimar? <gasps> Olimar got promoted. He's coming up in Div 2. Wait till you see what he has done to that division. But with Olimar gone, it's all up to Renard to catch Vendetta at the top of Division 3. Will he do it? Stay tuned for the next two months to find out. Div 2, here we go. Scribe. Now, round 1 was a breeze, as his opponent just totally failed to place an adequate defense and scribe capitalized with a full clear and a hold on fleet to boot which was quite nice round two was more of the same uh with the extra bonus of a jkl holding as well as fleet so he didn't full clear uh but he did more than enough for the win um and round three was pretty much a repeat of round two as he got the banners for the win with his defense holding the same as before JKL holding and also his fleet holding. Um, uh, unfortunately, the uh, yeah, he got held by uh, damn those people that put in malevolence negotiators fleet node defenses. Damn them! Three and O triple four scribe. As we mentioned, Orlamar is joining the Div Two players and starting straight off the bat with a three and O. Uh, round one, he had to two tap a Newt Bugs team, but he got a fleet hold, preventing a full clear. Uh, giving him the win. Round two was a full clear one shot. Darth Revan getting a hold. Padme getting two holds. And his malevolence flying high through, through really high through space. Anyways, two attempts later, his malevolence is still flying. Round three, a two tab on the bug team. Uh, Mon Mothma and crew first order. Uh, Gas, Padme, sisters, and Karth Old Republic all getting multiple holds on defense and absolutely shutting his opponent down. Reno, excellent job for Olimar. Lil Gator, hmm. A hard, hard week saw Gator struggle in all his rounds this week as none of his wins were particularly clean in rounds one and rounds two. Uh, and the Old Republic saw him lose in round three yeah uh he got smashed about by a clone trooper team and by a gas team uh, so uh yeah it, it was not an easy week for gator still good 
despite a long war, and he should still feel relatively good about that. Two and one for Lil Gaia. On to Boma Fett, three and O, oh, as he puts it, three full clears, easy three and O. Oh. Round one, easy one shot full clear. Opponent lost once to his mighty G10 and 11 Phoenix, <laughs> and once to his newt Django Sunfax Separatist team. Then they couldn't clear his malevolence for a pretty nice banner difference there. Round two, opponent set a super fast Darth Revan Malak Basla Sean Fallen team uh, that took me three squads to take down. He took two tries against Newt, but uh, then couldn't beat his own malevolence. So again, pretty similar difference in score there. Round three, again, an easy one-shot full clear using his JKR Basla GMY to take down a Relic 7 gas for a full 54 banners. He took two battles to beat his Newt, Bosk, Resistant Bros, and Phoenix. And for the third time in a row, his opponent failed to clear his malevolence. 3-0, and excellent job for Boma Fett. Kate Gaming. Kate was on honeymoon this week. Um, as... Doc, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Uh, 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 yeah, so Kate was on honeymoon this week as the queen of the auto deploys picked up a triple whammy. The wedding gift from the RNG gods, we'll call it. <laughs> uh, round one was a win and full clear against... You guessed it, an auto deploy. Uh, round two was a flawless victory with a win thanks to a JKR defensive hold. A round three saw another flawless victory and the bounty honey picked up the whammy courtesy of a CLS hold and a four banner victory. Three and oh, triple whammy for Kate. It's Jake, our British Jake. Three and O this week. Uh, and as put it, shame I couldn't clear fleets. And he can't wait to get his malevolence apparatus up and running. Round one, he had to four tap a bugs team. Had to two tap Tebow Bears of all bear combinations. And he couldn't clear the malevolence after two attempts. His opponent only beating Karth Old Republic and losing to Finn and the Bag Bros. Round two was a full clear one shot no problems whatsoever uh opponent failing on his cls 3po and r2 twice and again on finn and the bag bros round three was full clear potential up until he got to the fleets where a rebel fleet flew after two attempts karth old republic defends locking his opponent out of a full clear though so jake still squeaked out a win there excellent job three and oh for jake aw it's Geek Girl, the queen of consistency, and one of the bounty honeys. Picked up yet another solid 2-1, with good wins in round one and round two that were easy and put her on the path to a triple. Bad news came in round three, though, as Geek Girl was just, in her own words, outplayed. And she was defeated, unfortunately, by 30 Banners. Two and one for the week. Forky girl. There's a table. And look who's at the top. He came in crashing straight into first place. Bomber, look at is, Olimar. Bomber is not going to be happy with that. Bomber is not. He has got his work cut out for him if he wants to take Division 2. Or he can do what Fort Mort did. Because everybody's looking at that table now going, where's Fart Mark? Because wasn't Fartmart at the top? And you would be correct. Fartmart was at the top of Division 2. But like Olimar was promoted from 3 to 2, Fortmort has joined the Division 1 ranks and he got promoted. So Bomber was probably thinking, yay, I'm going to be top of Division 2. And then Olimar got promoted and it's like, no, I'm not going to be. So uh, yeah, but it's going to be an interesting, it's still going to be an interesting end to the season. Three round wins is not a... Uh, it's not the mountain that people first thought it was back at the beginning of the season. These leads can be clawed back. It's, it's, it's not a mountain, but we are approaching. We're in the second to last month. Mm -hmm. So you want to be getting them perfect runs in. You want to be get you. If you want any chance to take the top spot, you want two 12 and O's. You gotta be, you gotta be solid pretty much all the way through, but Hey, uh, we are at the end of mm -hmm. our uh, of our little 
uh, our, 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 our little player coverage. Mm-hmm. Getting ready to get into the big boys. Getting ready for the big boys. But before we do, as always, Paul and the noob have a little bit of coverage from a couple of our patrons, which if you're a patron, you want to support us and uh, you want to be part of the show, you can uh, support at the Kyber combatant level and get in there. But Paul will tell a little bit more about that in his break. Let's get on to that, shall we, Neil? Mm, you got it, mate. You guys over there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into a new month of the Escape Pod Castaways Patreon leaderboard, brought to you by the Patreons of the Escape Pod Cast. Since the Patreon is a monthly thing, we start fresh every single month to bring you a new board. There were no new joiners this past month, so our competitors are still the same, but we have some major shakeups to get to, so don't go too far. Would you like to join the Patreon leaderboard? Sign up at patreon.com slash the escape pod at the Kyber Combatant level or higher to get into next month's Patreon leaderboard. I'm Paul Anthony, one half of the founders of the Escape Pod Castaways, and I am joined by my robotic life partner, Newbie, of Helly and the Noob, as we bring you this commercial disguised as a segment. Let's get to the first week of this 3v3 for our Patreons as we take a look at Big Country Mags, who goes 3-0 and this week. He had a little trouble getting to ships in round two, but managed to hold his opponent's head underwater until the bubble stopped coming up. Decent score for the Magnum. Bringer goes 3-0 and in round one. He says his opponent set a damn good defense, but forgot all about offense. Not a full clear, but Bringer still came out on top. In round two, he turned his opponent into Slave Leia. Nuff said his words. And in round three, it was another close call, but yet the same outcome. Good defense, but nothing left for offense. He did get his best or he did his best, and the new friend that he made didn't want to come back and play anymore. He also wanted me to include this little comment. I guess it does pay to be at the bottom of Yavin 4's platoon list. It makes you a better theory crafter. But I will mention that he did have the most battle losses this week as well, so keep crafting there, Bringer. D took a big L this week, going 0-3 with only 26 battle wins. They were outplayed at almost every single turn. They wrote me a short report to share that I decided to turn into a haiku. It was very, very close to exactly this. This is a challenge. Lost all three rounds, no GL. I hate 3v3. Dr. Jojo goes 3-0. and His round one opponent set only four total teams and they still failed to clear a zone with all those extra offensive teams as Poppy Palp lived on with four defends. Round two, his opponent had two GLs, but he saved them both for offense. He still couldn't get past the Ray and he one shot full cleared him. In round three, his opponent set way too much for offense, which he still full cleared and he spoiled his triple crown six times versus the Sith Eternal Emperor who lives on to this day. Four Strong goes 3-0. and oh. His round one opponent set only four total teams. I just read that. That was Dr. Jojo. Four Strong goes 3-0 and oh this week as well and gets the nod for the most holds because of his general Grievous team in round two. He also takes home the least losses, but I will mention that he did not full clear all of his Grand Arenas, so I award him a triple chamois. Leonard McFacepunch, I believe our only competitor to have full cleared all three of his opponents on this board. He is awarded the gold star for most wins as well. The old one and two perennial flips that over and gets two for one this week. Oh, and he also gets the most banners gold star as well. Schnarman stood tall on the back of his Darth Revan holding serve for him going 3-0 and this week, but... Because of his low division, he can't make up the banners to climb the leaderboard, but banners is just one part of the equation as we take a look at this board so far. Dr. Jojo with the commanding lead of an extra 1,300 banners above his opponents, but if he would have lost just one and scored the same, he would be looking up at Leonard, who has two more banners than him. So, or I'm sorry, yeah, two more banners than him. So, so very close. But between them sits Four Strong, Bringer, Mags, and Schnarr all going 3 0. D has some work cut out for them if they wish to climb up, as they are two games back of the rest of the competitors. That does it for me this week. I am Paul Anthony for the Noob and the Escape Pod Castaways and Cast Patreons. We wish you a great week. Ask you to protect those that you love. Be, wear a mask. Be nice to each other, damn it. 
and I now send it back to the Nev and Flair for the big boys in Division One right here on GA Center. Take it away, boys. And welcome back to the show. Oh, it's big boy time. Big boy time. It is big boy, big time. boy time. The big, the, the biggest of boys are here. The biggest of boys are here. So uh, let's get straight into the big boys. And uh, it wouldn't be, you know, I, I think it's fitting since he did get promoted that we do our newest big boy. I was gonna say, are you are you are you comfortable calling him the big boy? Because not really, because he's my nemesis. He's your arch. He's your he's your sworn rival. He's my sworn rival and arch nemesis. Yes, <laughs> but it's Fort Mart Fort Mort's uh, going three and O, oh, and as usual with Fort Mort, he goes the heavy defense strategy, which you 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 just loathe, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, but Fort Mort, as as he says, uh, first round. Pona had a higher GP uh, and uh, took one team down, apparently hoping for a GP win. Fort Mort, Fort Mort, obviously going for heavy defense, picked his opponent apart for a full clear with multiple attempts on a couple of teams, but still gained a full clear. Round two, his opponent placed Darth Revan and Jedi Knight Revan in front of ships and again attacked only a single team, hoping for a GP win. Uh, but Fort Mort cleared uh, the bottom plus one to get the win. Uh, round three, uh, here's how he puts it. Me, 13 versus 7 Relics. Him, 72 G12 versus 26 G12. Plus 10 Zeta advantage on him. And uh, his opponent also had the speed advantage. We both waited until 40 minutes left. His opponent guarded top while Fort Mort cleared bottom plus 2. Uh, and uh, his opponent went full defense and attacked in the last 25 minutes. Saw my ships and ran back down to the bottom, but failed on the bottom front twice. Half clear and two teams. Defense wins game. And as he put it, I had no business winning this one. First round in Div 1 was supposed to be easy. 3-0 for Fort Moore. And it's Wrangler. 2-1 for the Space Girl, for the Space Cowboy with the fashionable hats. I have seen the hats. and They are very fashionable. Rounds one and rounds three were good, solid, full clears. But in round two, he faced a GL Ray, who bitch slapped him five times. Understandably, he conceded after the fifth slap, and it was a <laughs> loss. But still, two and one for the week for Wrangler. On to Wiggins Bog, or Wigsy. Wigsy. Uh, three and O. Oh. Round one was a full clear one shot. No problems whatsoever. His slacker getting two holds and Sith eternal. Okay, this joke's going to get too old. Seep getting two holds. Round two was a full clear one shot and a no show. Okay. Round three, two tap on slacker, but he had to, and he also uh, had to two tap the negotiator fleet, but his opponent couldn't take down the level ones after three attempts. So Wiggins Vogue. Settling with a nice three and zero. Oh. Excellent job. Whatever. Yes, three and zero, oh, but no triple whammy or crown. Still triple, but no whammy or crown. So he's really disappointed in that. Now round one was a win, but surprisingly, it, that was where he didn't get his full clear, despite knowing that his opponent always auto deploys. He couldn't get the gravy, and he didn't save sufficient enough teams to full clear his opponent. Yeah. Round two was an efficiency battle with whatever coming out on top by 14 banners. Round three, the defense won out this round. So he could secure the triple with crew and Shaq holding the line. 3-0, regular triple for whatever this week. Look at this British chap. Yes, look at this British chap. Look at you with a 3-0. and oh. I know, I know. Well, what can you say, eh? But, uh, hey, it wasn't, it wasn't a triple crown. Nah, nah. I knew I wasn't going to get a triple crown. Too many losses in the first round, so. Oh, first round with the auto-deploy? Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Must have been some nasty stuff. There was a couple of nasty ones in there, yeah. But, uh, but hey, you know, still got a 3-0. Oh. Yeah, yeah, still got a 3-0. Oh. I'm not going to complain. Clap, clap, bravo. Mustn't grumble. <laughs> oh my god 
Spartan with a 3 0. Back to winning ways for Spartan. Has he got his first triple in three months? Three months! been a long time coming. Round one was an easy full clear, with bounty hunters doing the job of holding for the win. Round two was a win, but he couldn't quite pull off the full clear due to some pesky night sisters. Uh, round three was a rout, though, as he smashed his opponent with an efficient full clear, winning on banners. 3-0, triple the Spartan. All right, on to Jigabachi. Going 3-0, and, oh, and as he as he put it, nice thing he got, all three of his opponents were chill and joined his stream chat, which was a first. Round one, mismatch in his favor. Uh, crushed on his def uh, I crushed on his defense, as he put it, and got he got stuck on fleets. I had the win early in the match, so I had some extra battles to play with and did some experimenting. Walls melted, I dreamed I was a bird flying into Gallup. Round two, put a little more on D this round to make peepers who scout the site's life a bit more stressed i mixed up almost all the teams from round one it didn't matter dude didn't put any fleets down and even with his entire ship shipment of ships get it uh, sure okay he still couldn't clear mine one shot everything completed all feats and married a goth girl round three drew a nice chap who just about pocketed the bane of my roster for whatever reason, I pulled everything for offense. The only decent trips were a GG and a yellow Godzilla. Insert that with Bosk team. Both of which he got stuck on. Never attempted my top uh, triple clasp of finger trickery held, giving him breathing room. Patched up for quite a few battles, threw a bit, scored touchdowns, and cleared bottom. Low scoring game, but he won. And uh, he would like to, to thank uh, people like Solo for comps for Kylo and Scribe for helping him out in chat. Uh, for being good people. Good people. Three no for Jigabachi. Ran B. Two and one. Again. Dude, you're killing me. You you got to give me something else to say for you except for two and one because it's always two and bloody one. Ah, <sighs> you're killing me here. Yeah. Round one and round two were simple wins. With full clears, but again, then comes round three. And another loss by five banners. I'm sure that there's a triple somewhere on that horizon, Rand. You just hurry up and get it. Hurry up, because these two and ones are killing me. Probably killing you too. Two and one for Rand. On to Bisweez, Biscuit Weasel, round one. Uh, oh, first off, going 3 0. Round one, opponent auto set, and I cleared both top areas and the bottom front, plus two teams in the back. Opponent didn't even show up to play. Round two, opponent has a very similar roster with JKL and was going for JML. Uh, they cleared me and only dropped a battle versus my Rolo team. He, he loves his Rolo team, by the way. <laughs> like, he swears by it, uh, which gets me holds nearly every week. We each dropped one battle, but he cleared their fleets, and his opponent didn't even attempt the fleets. Round three, each getting full clears, but his opponent, again, two shot as Rolo team, and took six battles to clear crew, OG Kylo, and Watt in the back, securing a win. He still doesn't care for 3v3, but he'll take a 3-0. Good job, Darth Biscuit. Biscuit Weasel. Bisweez. Bisweez. Bitcoin with a 3-0, as usual, and a whammy. So yeah, but very unusual. Look at that. Look, look see that the losses column. There's losses in the losses box. I mean, round one was very, very wobbly for Bitcoin, as that's where he made these three mistakes. Uh, I mean, he made mistakes and he kind of got screwed by our, the RNG gods because he had a crash uh, and a dodge fest in there. So, uh, but yeah, once round one was out of the way, what do you expect rounds two and three were? Yeah. <laughs> Rounds two and three were not wobbly. Uh, as he got full, full clears and flawless victories and stopped his opponents from clearing any territories. Wow. Yeah, so uh, uh, three and oh, we know that none of these matches were against his girlfriend because he only loses to his girlfriend. <laughs> three and oh, triple whammy to Bitcoin. I'm waiting for us to introduce his girlfriend into the league because <laughs> clearly... Anyways, Yeti going 3-0, oh, as he put it, a defensive 
master class you know those master classes that they advertise on like youtube and stuff like that mm -hmm. like like the the pilot the aerospace dude doing his master class this is what yeti would be doing uh in those uh, round one i he had no business beating this guy 1.4 million gp on yeti ultimate gl and uh, jkl he said a middle finger defense knowing what kind of defense uh that he'd see from his opponent uh, cleared around the GL one shots and watched him drop battle after battle, managing to clear only a single zone. Round two, Hunter had 1.3 million GP on him. Depth for days. Uh, lightened his de uh, Yeti lightened his defenses from previous round, adjusting to his opponent's play style and shot the board. Tried for a bounty hunter feat and lost, which ruined the one shot full clear, but he did take the rest of the board in one attempt each. Opponent took the top after dropping a bunch of battles. Defense stood tall for an easy win where, where he took his GL for offense. Round three, again, 1.3 million GP, JKL and ultimate GL uh, set a similar defense for round two and uh, saw how he places his defenses and realized he'd be ultra screwed if he said it again. He likes to attack with his ultimate Kylo and did so, losing the Yetis. Ouch. Dropped a handful of battles on his defense overall, but took the top. Yet he shot the board, but needed to shot a Darth Revan Malak team. Full clear, though, as one only managed to take the top 3 0 defensive masterclass from Yeti. And there is the Division I Freshman League, and Fortmore comes in and he drops just in behind Bitcoin at 47 banners. Wow. My nemesis is three full rounds ahead of me. I have seven weeks to catch him. I don't I don't know, man. I want to make him my bitch. <laughs> hey, if I do it, if I do it, if I can catch him and overtake him in the league, not only will he know that I beat him, but he will know that I beat him having missed a full week of the season. Which is just going to be... So sweet if I can do it. So sweet. You have fun with that. Mm, yeah, but Bitcoin's at the top as we kind of, you know, Because expect. he's not playing against his girlfriend. No, because he's not playing against his girlfriend, no. So, uh, yes, interesting. Very interesting. But, uh, yeah, no one's catching Bitcoin. The race is for second. Definitely. The race is for second. That's where it is. That's where it is going to stay. Anyway, it's time to go on to the big, big boys now. Yes, big, big boys. Big, big boys. And we start off with Ranger. Oh, no. Ranger didn't get a triple. And he had such a good start getting a flawless victory in round one. But in round two, he tried a Malik solo, didn't he? Against a Newt Dooku Droidica team. And the lost... Cost him the round by 10 banners. Oh, one Round three was a good way to stop the rot, though. But he didn't fall clear. And he got lucky because his opponent was a DNS. Didn't turn up. <laughs> Two and one for Ranger. Laugh is Cabra. And Cabra's laugh. On to Scorch the Hoss, uh, going one and two. Uh, you know, I feel like I need to like bring in like a a, a wrestler personality every mm -hmm. time for this guy. Like, do, do some like, oh yeah, Macho Man Randy Savage. I don't know. <laughs> uh, round one, three tap on Slacker. At a two tap Mall Sith team, three tap a Krennic Empire team, only getting a single hold with his Camaro. Round two. He had to two tap a Rolo Wigs team and got ba out bannered, even though his Rolo, Snolo, and old Ben got a hold as well. Uh, round three, even though it wasn't a full clear, he went up against an auto set defense and his opponent didn't even show up. So a one and two for Scorch the Hoss. And as our producer Paul has mentioned, never do that again. Duly noted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul, Darth Stormin. Had one of those good bad weeks. Uh, as you can see, it's one and two. Uh, he lost round one, only clearing one territory. 
he lost round two mm, pretty much the same way, unfortunately. Uh, in round three, he faced a sandbag <sighs> and a potential wooden spot. Boon was on the cards, which would have been a terrible week. But he surprised himself, and he got the full clear. Not to mention racking up 259 losses, which are added to his total as he chases the Dunces Cup. Bad, you've got competition, my son. I... Like, the, these five-year-olds are having a hard time trying to figure out what they're doing. And the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, come on. Anyways, Mudbum, 3-0. 3-0 for the week, as he says. Uh, couldn't clear his opponent in round one. Uh, his opponent hit Darth Revan with Bastion Malak, and the mod optimizer decided that a brilliant idea was to give his Rex a level one speed arrow. So he had, like, 108 bonus speed or something stupid. Anyways, that meant that Gas couldn't kill Darth Revan. And uh, got pooped on. But lucky for him, uh, couldn't his opponent could not clear his Jedi Knight Luke team in the back. Squeaked away with the win. Round two, full cleared and one on efficiency. Uh, put a decent score with all one shots and tripping up his opponent on a few places. Round three, tripped once on the Jedi Master Luke on defense, but still walked away with a whopping 26-62 banners. Was crazy efficient on everything else. And his opponent just couldn't touch him. Feeling good about GAC as he puts it. 3 0 for a mud bum. Ah, that's no moon. 3 0. Only a triple whammy. Oh, that one loss stopping him from getting the crown. Round one. Great round. Flawless victory against one of Paul's guild mates, and he was off to the races. Round two was a slaughter. Uh, he pummeled his opponent and took a convincing win by 49 banners. Round three was the key to his crown, but alas, it didn't pan out as his opponent sandbagged him with his best seven teams. And Moon tripped up on the Palp Bastilla Malik team. Had to settle for a whammy. Ugh. Yeah. Whammies do suck when you lose the crown in round three. So, uh, yeah. I do feel for him, but you can't complain too vociferously. You did get a triple whammy. Absolutely. On to Micaeus. In some modding mayhem or something like that, with a GL now in his kit. Uh, as he puts it, win, win, win. Catch me on your local leaderboards. Round one, actually, first off, triple crown. So we we don't really have much to talk about in terms of that part. We'll talk about what happened on defense on on his defense, shall we? Round one, just a hold with Executrix. That's that's all. That's all we're at home about. Round two, nobody showed up. Okay, round three, the sisters, those dames of Dathomir, getting a hold and sealing the deal and giving him the triple crown. 3-0. Excellent job for Micaeus. It's just Ian had a great week. Um, picked up a triple whammy. Almost, almost, I must stress, got a crown, but uh, he... He, unfortunately, he had a couple double taps. Uh, he had to double tap a, um, a fleet battle. And he had to double tap, of all teams, a Mon Mothma Wigs team. And that's, uh, that's what stopped the Triple Crown. But hey, Triple Whammy is still really, really good. And, and it's just Ian. He tends to come up against a lot of GLs. So yeah, he'll savor this one. He will definitely savor this week's Triple Whammy. Gridden, uh, unfortunately, having a one and two week. Mm. Um, round one, he had to uh, he had to two tap a negotiator fleet, and unfortunately, he got full clear one shot. Round two, he he brought the A game back and had no problems at all. It was a full clear one shot, and his opponent didn't show up, so that made things even sweeter. Round three, unfortunately, was a Padme two tap, and alas, getting uh, getting full clear one shot. 
So it, tough week, tough week for, for Grid. Even though he only lost two battles, period, across the entire week. Just, oh, man. Rem Sucks. Reminds me of what happened to Heinze last week. I know. But one and two for Grid. Broderick Jones going nerdy or fad to his friends. Fad also, like Paul, had a good bad week. <laughs> um, and it, it was good. Crap up, guys. It was good because he, he got two wins. I mean, he actually got two wins this week. But because he only got one loss, it didn't really give him enough to catch Paul in the chase for the Dunce Cup. Uh, as he only lost a poultry 116 times this week. Paul will be very, very happy. Two and one for that. Can we just, can we just acknowledge that we got to that point where two people are fighting for being the worst loser? Yes. It he is bad at being good. And yes. he's, and he's, most people you would say are good at being bad, but he's not. He's bad at being bad. <laughs> anyways, anyways, let's talk about Fruit Ninja Mike for a second. 3 0 this week, this very odd week. Fruit Ninja Mike says that uh, he forgot to play 3 3, but it's coming back to him. Uh, round one, opponent placed a hard defense. Was a good account, uh, but showed no showed on attacks. Uh, Mike cleared, but it was a very dirty clear. Round two, Horrible mods on his opponent. Again, a, a hard defense and a very dirty clear. But uh, his opponent just did not come close to clearing him at all. Round three, opponent set both GLs they had. And uh, Mike started to figure out the, the, the muscles came back for 3v3. There was no way his opponent was going to clear him. So did a little testing, got the Aura Boba feed after weakening a team. But otherwise, was a solid one-shot full clear, giving him a 3 and 0. Oh. Excellent job, Fruit Ninja Mike. End all be all. The king of defense with another triple this week. Round one was a ruthless display of GAC supremacy. As not only did he pick up the flawless victory, he held all of his territories. This wasn't someone that didn't show up or didn't attack. He simply could not get any territories cleared that round two was a different kettle of fish though because uh according to his report it was a drunk stream because he was drinking on stream with his fellow gambit crew and what's even more surprising is he still got the full clear so he was drunk and he still got the full clear um, but on this one, his opponent was a DNS. His opponent did not show him round two. Round three was against a 500k opponent who he hit with another flawless victory and held two territories. Triple whammy for end all be all this week. Is this our, is this our um, annual PSA of don't drink and gack people? Don't drink and gack people. <laughs> we, we we can't all you can't all be end all be all. Don't drink and gack. <laughs> Get your pickles out because we're talking about Finn, the the other half of uh, our RSG crew. Uh, three wins. First opponent had a GL, but uh, auto set his defenses and weirdly still attacked, but lacked the depth of teams. Uh, round two, opponent went very heavy on defense and just lacked the offensive material to uh, to clear Finn. Round three, again, a very heavy defensive opponent, but only did one attack on offense. So Finn is walking away with a 3-0. A very a, a messy 3-0, but still a 3-0. DPK with a 2-1. Round one was not a good start, as he forgot to finish attacking. And lost. I don't know. Round two didn't get a full clear, but did get the important victory. And round three picked up the win due to facing an easy peasy auto deploy and saved 
what could have been a very bad week for someone who, just like Micaeus, loathes, no, no, nay, nay, mega loathes 3v3. Two and one for DPK. On to uh, DB official. Uh, going, ah, oh, man, dude, ha having it uh, a little rough. Uh, round one was a no-show, getting full cleared. Uh, round two, he had two tap array. Could, uh, couldn't kill Palp Empire after two attempts or the Chimera fleet. Darth Revan holding and uh, Chimera got two holds, but it's not enough when you get full cleared. Uh, round three was an auto set defense. Messy battles, but a no show. So, uh, DB, you, okay, you have him as two and one, but I have him as one and two. You have him as one and two? I have him as one and two. Oh, I had him as two and one. Me me maybe, maybe an error on my part. I think it might be a clerical error. Might be a clerical error. I want to speak to. I want. Uh, I, I, I want to speak to the manager. Two. Yep. Yep. I'll, I'll see your manager. You can see my manager afterwards. Yes. <laughs> Bless you. I was about to start speaking. I felt it coming, and it was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, two and one for Cubs. A, a very. Oh God. A really bad RNG round one for Cubs. Um, as he lost the round by uh, 26 banners as Ooh. squads got beat that just shouldn't have got beat. I mean, seriously, JKL, Relict JKL against Dooku Sumfak Django? Uh, I, I, I just, I don't get that. I do not understand how a Relict JKL loses to that team. I just don't get it. Anyway, that cost him the loss in round one. Uh, round, obviously, you know, rounds two and rounds three, they were good rounds, and he was able to secure a solid week and a two-and-one finish. But still, JKL losing to Dooku, some fact, Django, that just makes no sense to me whatsoever. Who, who, who knows? Who knows what's happened at all with that? Anyways, on to Black Mamba. All pretty typical for him going 3-0 at this rate. Um, round one had to three tap a Rex Galactic Republic. It was like Rex and um, Barris and Fives. Uh, with uh, his Finn and his Bag Bros getting a hold, uh, Newt Separatists and Maul Marauder and Nest with his Chimera also getting holds, and Jedi Knight Luke getting more holds and holding the line, not falling. Round two was a full clear one shot with General Grievous getting three holds, Newt getting two, Chimera getting a hold, Finn getting a hold. And Gas and Darth Revan standing after securing holds. Round three, again, a full clear one shot uh, with a CLS hold securing his victory. 3-0, and oh, so very close. That round that round one could, could, could have given him a triple crown. But still a 3-0, and oh, triple whammy for Black Mamba. And there is the bottom of Standard Division 1. And it's just Ian is in the coveted top of the bottom position. Uh, it's, yeah, well, I mean, he's, he's definitely pulling away. Ian has had some good. We'll have to see who's at the bottom of the top to see if there's going to be any changes in these two tables. Let's have a quick look and see what happens. Oh, he is close. He is very close to Micaeus. He's two rounds. Micaeus currently holds the bottom of the top. Will it just Ian unseat him? But uh, there we have Fruit Ninja Mike and Endor Beal at the top, as you expect to see them, with a good old-fashioned banner fight to see who's mm. going to win out. I, it's definitely, oh, it's a very, it's, it's definitely going to be a, a, a well-anticipated finale to the end of the season. I would love to see these two guys fight each other. In the last week of the last month, I think it would be awesome. It really, really would be awesome. Not going to, you know, I'll, I'll keep my fingers crossed, but I, I ain't holding my breath. Anyway, let's get on to the big, big, big boys. On to the, 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 the biggest of big people. Zareth, nice week for the Gambit crew. They really, really did have a good week as uh, Zareth got a whammy. Um, round one's opponent struggled and couldn't clear fleet, so Zareth... Lawless victoried him, which was twice as sweet. A round two was a testing round. 
And unfortunately, he failed the tests. You failed the tests. And lost the triple crown. Despite winning the round with a full clear. Round three was a punishing victory. As he smashed his opponent with a flawless victory. And beat him by 52 banners. I mean, have you no mercy, Zaref? 3-0, triple whammy. Stop it. Stop it. He's already dead. He's already dead. <laughs> The other half of the game podcast, Solo going 3-0 and for the week as well. Round one, went up against his first and longest standing patron with his, uh, with his uh, co-pilot in, uh, in, in, in crew, Zareth, stepping in to coach his opponent for the match. Uh, Solo was able to one-shot all of Zareth's uh, recommended defenses while his patron struggled on Solo's and did not get the full clear. Round two. Opponents set a light defense, expecting to play an efficiency match against him. Uh, Solo easily one-shot the board while his opponent couldn't clear his and took multiple losses. Round three, his opponent set triple GLs on defense, including JML with Watt and Slacker with Darth Revan on the team. Uh, he got the full clear, but JML did steal the triple crown from Solo. Uh, couldn't beat his Ray, meaning that no one full cleared Solo this week. So, uh, 3-0 for Solo. Rambam, 2-1. Rambam's week would have been so much better if Slacker didn't exist. That, it just would have been so much better. That's it. He just needs Slacker to not exist. Slacker cost him round one. And he cried into his soup as he opened the door for Ando. But knowing that Ando lost round two, he knuckled down and shut the door. Taking victories in rounds two and three. The dream for Rambam lives on. On to Mandalore, going two and one this week. Uh, round one, you know, having a, a bunch of issues, having to having to three tap a Hux team, having to do multiple attempts against a, uh, a Slacker, having issues with GL Ray, Bastila, Dooku, uh, just just rough times with uh, you know not getting a full clear because of Slacker as well. Thankfully, had a uh, it's not a no show. But his opponent did two attempts against his Ray defense. And uh, yeah, just, just got crushed. Uh, round two, uh, Grievous having to do three attempts against him, uh, having to do a second attempt against a Poggle-led SEP team. And uh, his opponent uh, having, having some issues against him. Again, that Ray team uh, just securing him some wins there, giving him four, uh, three holds. His Akbar Rebels giving him a hold and... Uh, yeah, 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 not even a full attempt clear because uh, of that Ray. Round three was where the loss comes in. Even though it was a full clear one shot, his opponent was just that much more efficient by 21 banners. So two and one for Mandy. Bad luck for Turtle as he picked up a draw in round one and posted a loss due to the outdated tie rules courtesy of CG. Round two was where it went from bad to worse, outmatched and facing a JML. He suffered way too many losses and he didn't have enough in the tank for a full clear. Round three was scant consolation, but it did stop the wooden spoon as his opponent did not show one and two for lazy turtle on to Kleso going three and oh uh, round one his only loss uh, he from what looks like he looks like he lost a battle in each round round one his loss was against a chimera fleet timing out uh negotiator versus chimera coming in with a cleanup after that is uh his, his opponent just uh having uh actually not as many issues uh he actually got out bannered even though it looks like he full clear one shot. So, uh, hey, Kless is going to take that. Round two, uh, again, having to two tap a crew first order team. And uh, his opponents uh, coming in and uh, again getting out bannered, even though he full clear one shot. Klesso is just doing an excellent job of making up the banners. And uh, round three, having to two tap against a Newt Sep team. But his opponent. Actually lost some battles against this GL Ray on defense and Darth Revan. Uh, also, not being able to uh, to deal with the Akbar fleet, having to three tap that one. So an excellent job for a three and zero for Klesso.
A record-setting round one saw Jake Johnson get 2,705 banners, courtesy of nine solos, including a Han Solo solo. Mm-hmm. Round two was a full clear, and with a triple in sight, it, it all just fell apart. On those witches of Dathomir, the Night Sisters, two and one, still good. Indigo going two and one this week. Round one was his loss, having to uh, having to deal with the Sith, Eternal Emperor Palpatine, and Darth Revan. Seep is still standing after four attempts, and Darth Revan had to take three teams to fall, preventing a full clear. He also prevented a full clear for his opponent, though, having to spend an exorbitant amount of attempts, 11 attempts, trying to kill Rey, still unable to, um, unable to kill his Jedi Knight Luke, but coming in with seven more banners. The rest of the week, let's be honest, it's really nothing to write home about. Uh, he did not attempt the ships in round two, but his opponent just didn't even show up to play. And in round three, he got a full clear one shot uh, with his uh, opponent not showing up to play either. So uh, Indigo taking a two and one. Ah, oh, Heinze, excellent week made bad by one stinking team as the Aussie Adonis got flawless victories. Yes, flawless victories. You heard me right in rounds one and rounds three. It was a team in round two, though, that spoilt the week as GL Ray stopped him dead. And that stopped him hitting the fleet and getting the full clear. But two and one was great for Heinze this week. Dialar didn't have as, as good of a week though. Going uh going with a uh, two and one, having having some issues there. Um round one was the win. Both of us were good on the ground, but he was a little bit better and uh, he dropped one. But his his opponent burnt three fleets on home one and left it standing for a Dialar victory. Thou shall not pass. Round two was a loss. Dropped the bell on the ground, and his opponent went perfect. Rip, triple whammy. Uh, round three was another win. Uh, did not anticipate him setting his ray on defense after looking at his history. Sadly, his opponent hit in the back, and after he burned his slacker to solo front team. But, in his words, things went south quickly, and he racked up 15 failed attempts, seven on Geos, and left the Bugs and Phasma standing in the back. Good job for Dylar. The Grand Admiral got the triple this week, but it wasn't without issue. It was not without issue. In round one, the Grand Admiral showed a little too much arrogance against a lowly resistance team, and the Emperor, who was his next opponent, punished him for it. The Emperor clearly not liking the insubordination, from such a high-ranking officer, spanked him nine times. He took the victory, though, and the lesson learned from his emperor, and took full clears in rounds two and round three to secure a triple and a trip higher up the table. And rounding out our coverage, as always, is Ando90. And uh, also, stick around, because we did get to talk to Ando for a little bit this week. Uh, for our interview for segment three. But uh, Ando, uh, round up going two and one. Round one was his win. Face a guy that was devastated by his defenses. So his opponent just never even attacked. Easy win. Round two was the loss. Okay. Fatal, aka the playbook from YouTube, and uh, him got a rematch. And uh, try, Ando tried to do some Jedi mind tricks uh, into making Fatal into thinking that he had a super built up defense in the back. And after seeing Fatal struggle on some of his comps, he mind-tricked himself into thinking that his back wall was crazy as well. Both of them played into each other, and uh, it was a really fun and mentally engaging match that he lost. The biggest heartbreak of the match was one that he was set to score 53-54 on, but ended in a draw. Hashtag some regrets. Round three, win. Nothing crazy or notable. Two and one for Ando. And there is Division 1, Klesu at the top, Zareth just behind him, Solo Base just behind him, but the climber this week is the Grand Admiral himself, up to fourth in Division 1, Elite Division. 
Indigo drops. Dyla really drops. Ando and Rambam stagnant. But with both receiving the opportunity later on this month, maybe, to take advantage of Dylar's misfortune. So, anyway, we are speeding along. It's time for the interview. And uh, it, as I mentioned, this one's with Ando. See you after so. these few messages. Yep. Are you a member of Team Paul or Team Neil? Maybe you prefer story time with the llama, or dabble in the buttery side of the force with Biscuit Weasel. Or maybe you like the escape pod talents from down under, like Heinze and Scotty. No matter who you support, you can get one of my designs from the Escape Podcast merch store. Just go to escapepodcastaways.com, click on the merch link, and it will take you to the Tee Public site where you can support me, Mrs. Anthony, also known as Critty K. Also be sure to check out the Mrs. Anthony Shirts channel on the Escape Podcast's Discord server weekly to vote for my latest shirts in the Design Derby on Woot. Links for both of these are down below. Thank you for supporting the Escape Pod cast. Does your guild want to tap into their full potential in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes? Yeah! For as low as $1 a month per guild member, your guild can unleash the power of the game in ways you never thought possible. Ooh. Track your arena movements, guild progression, and much, much more. Ah. Contact Shitty Bill and get one of his shitty bots on your server today. Just look for him on our Discord server and tag or message him for more information. The link for our server is below in the description. Shitty bots, don't let the name fool you. SWGOH.GG is your one-stop site for the raw data behind the game Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. From complete gear lists to intuitive stats behind all of your favorite hollow table heroes. SWGOH.GG has it all. With a .GG account, you can get a complete view of your own roster, see how you match up against other players, and even check out the history of your own Grand Arena Championship matches. You can also see what your opponent used on you to give you a better understanding of counters and team compositions to improve your gameplay. Did you know that they also have some great Patreon features as well? Ad-free browsing of their site, guild information, and manual information requests are included in their three levels of Patreon support. Check out the site for more details. That's swgoh.gg. Unleash your hollow table potential today. And welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We have a very, very... Very interesting competitor to interview this week. Uh, he's not very liked by Rambam, but we're not going <laughs> to hold that against him. And uh, he is one of the only competitors to compete against the playbook and live to tell the tale. It's Ando, ladies and gentlemen. It sounds like they stab each other when they finish <laughs> these battles. Jeez. Hey, sometimes that has to happen. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, thank you guys for having me on here, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> How you doing, Ando? Pretty good, dude. Pretty good. Can't complain. Uh, I, I assume that uh, round one was pretty much, you know, plain sailing, nice and easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the guy, the guy that I was playing against, definitely uh, the first round was like he didn't even attack. I went through him, I cleared him. Uh, it was a good. I actually, it was actually a round where, like, if you watch my replay of it, like, I legitimately have so much to use, and I tell myself, like, like I have like a JML that I was just sitting on on the bench, and I was like. No, you know what? We're going to use bugs in here because I want to test this out right now rather than to go... Like, I knew Fatal was going to be in our round at some point. I thought it was the third round, but we, we met him in the second. And I was like, hey, you know what? I Like, let's test this out now, see if it works when, in a match that I know I'm going to win, mm -hmm. then risk the win and, and not know if it's going to work, you know? Mm -hmm. So... So that's what we we ended up doing. Like I was just like kind of messing around. Like, hey, does this work? Does Ness work in the in this line? You know, how can we can we solo this one? So, uh, yeah, it was a very easy one. So that and I don't then, even think he attacked. Yep. So that then brought us to round two and yeah. the rematch against Fatal, yeah. also known as the playbook. Uh, yeah. Talk us through it, mate. How did it go? Um, okay, so I think you have to understand a little bit of the backstory too. So we, we fought each other in 5v5, which is a little bit different, you know, um, as far as like the depth is concerned with it. Um, and I can't remember like how close it was, but I, it wasn't like it was like it, 
it wasn't like he blew me out of the water or anything like that. But um, we learned, I think, from each other. And then I got invited out to Kyber Council, which is like, you know, his show that he does with Ken. And we're talking about strategies on there and not knowing, obviously, that we're going to get matched up with each other. But it's like, OK, so now that's like also factoring into, hey, um, you know, how are we going to play this? Uh, you know, because I talk to people, like, you know, I answer questions about how I'm going to play 3v3. He answered how he's going to play 3v3. Is he, is he going to kind of reverse on that? Is am I going to reverse he's gonna on that? Is he going to be true to his word, or is exactly, he going to do like, some because some we kind of exactly because we kind of threw our cards on the table, right? Like, or we threw like half a hand on our uh, on the table, and uh, so now, like you know, it's like you no, know, he's seen me play. He's he heard me how I I want to play three three. I heard him. I've seen him play. Mm-hmm. So what I did was I was like, hey, listen, I'm going to set up my front two zones to to make it almost like obvious that i'm trying to hide something in the back like i'm trying to bait stuff out of him mm-hmm. um so that way like he can you know not use a um not try to use his best squads like there in the front like if he knew well, what, that what I, would I, you what you would use on the best things that you would sit on right. defense is what he'd have to use on the front exactly wall. like i didn't want him to just go in and be like oh he has no gls in the back like i can just use my gl and just destroy his front wall and then like solo the rest of it you know um and I set like a little bit softer defense in the back, like stuff that was supposed to be taking away banners, but not like holding by any means. Mm-hmm. And um, and like so, my thought was like, hey, I'm going to bring all three GLs on offense, uh, because one, I did an early scout on him, and I saw that he modded his JML in such a way that I was like, he's definitely going to run a Basil Watt JML comp because he threw like all health mods on. It was like 213k health or something like that. So it was just like with the Basil lead, with all that health, all that protection up and stuff like that, I was like, okay, we're going to face that. So I need my SLK for that. So I knew that that was already spoken for. And then when I saw his defenses, I saw that he had Ray in the front wall. So I was like, okay, well, we're going to have to GL that. I don't know what that's going to be, but we're going to have to GL that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it was just like this, it was like this mind game because the last mm-hmm. time I played defense heavy, because that's kind of like what I've been going to. This time I, I tried to play it like, hey, I'm going defense heavy. But when he went, when he cracks through that front wall and he realizes that, oh, like I wasted battles. Like I like he like two shot my CLS. Yeah, he, he two shot my CLS and he two shot my Padme, which were all in my front wall. And now he realizes like, oh my gosh, I could have been way more efficient. And now it opens up the game so that way I can play the efficiency game. Mm-hmm. Um, which is what I thought w- what it was. Well, that worried me. And you'll see if you watch the stream, I I got extremely worried because then in the top zone, he five shot my Asajj lead. So I was like, wait a second. He might have went super defense heavy and is trying to bait me into my own game. So I was like, wait. He pulled a reverse card. (laughs) Right, exactly. So now this whole time I'm like, there's mental games going on in my head while I'm attacking. Uh, which was just like excellent. This is like why people love GAC mm-hmm. um, because the strategy behind it. And um, and yeah, like it was just in the back of my head. I was like, I cannot waste a GL here on the front wall other than on Ray. And then when I opened up his back wall, I only saw JML. And I was like, wait, I thought SLKR was going to be back here because of how bad he struggled on that that top front. Mm-hmm. Made me think like, wow, he might, you know, there might be a JKR back there. There might be, uh, you know, an SLKR, right? Like all these things start running in mm-hmm. your head. And you're like, I don't have counters for this because I didn't plan for that. Uh, so yeah, it was extremely fun, fun match. Uh, always really cool. For, he always like, he'll always attack first because his stream time is earlier than mine. But then mm-hmm. he like comes right over and he's like, hey, cool. Like <laughs> and watches. Uh, really cool. Really cool guy. And obviously, ultimately, you lost it. What, what, was, the, uh, what was the banner difference? uh 17 i believe it was 17 which sounds like a lot but like no in 3v3 that's close in 3v3 well well it sounds like a lot but then you have to remember that on that gl ray right like i was i was set to score 54 banners on it Mm -hmm. and i i timed out um because because and this is all on me because i did not understand ray's kit that she has to get back up to 60 percent health i was I was waiting till about the 50% health mark. And I was like, where's her saber throw? I don't like, I don't get it. And we, we had like 30 seconds left. And I was like, uh, I don't understand. Like, why don't Panic I have during a- the headlights kind of moment? 
yeah. And I was like, I don't get this. Like I should be killing these guys right now with my saber throws. And, and yeah, like none of my guys has lost protection or anything like that. So I was probably set to get 53 or 54 that turned into a, a draw with just Ray standing. And then I had to take my bugs for cleanup in there. And that only scored me 30 something, you know, or whatever the scoring was. And so that's a huge point difference right there. Like if I just one shot my, with my GL there, then, you know, which it's, yeah, it's a lot different story. Um, and then, you know, again, you know, hindsight's 2020. If I, if I had known that there wasn't this GL back there, uh, that you I just told myself with something big and gotten exactly because I had all three GLs on offense. I thought, mm. like, I thought whenever I saw him kind of struggling on my defense, I thought, wow, he set all three of his GLs on defense, and I'm I'm now going to be the one struggling through his defense. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh crap, this sucks, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's why it's always so fun. Like, it's 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 awesome. Like, I love GAC for that reason. Uh, so you especially think, when you it's think like he baited are, you, are creators, because it's like. It, it, going up against just uh, Joe Schmuck, it's like, okay, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know how right. his play style is. But when you know I'm playing against this guy, yep. I know what he does. I know how he plays because I watch him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that yeah. That changes the game completely. Yeah, it absolutely does, yeah. It, it's so great, too, like, especially – and, like, even – even guys that just like hit me up, like, like Pyro is another guy that's hit me up before. It's hilarious because we did the exact same thing. We both plays defense heavy um, on 5v5. Well, we actually have only rematched on 5v5. But it was like one time we scored like, you know, in the 1800s. And then the next time we both score like in the 21s or whatever it is, like the new max. Um, and it would just like turn from a defense heavy match to a offense heavy match and, and trying to out a fish. Um, you know, get the efficiency out of each other. So mm-hmm. it was, it, it, that's what's so great about this is like, you can just kind of turn on a dime and try to play off them. But what if they're playing off of you and now all of a sudden you're playing into them? So uh, very, very cool. I love it. So obviously you finished off the week with a win. Uh, was the, was round three um, uh, an easy, uh, uh, an easy consolation to get the two one at the end of the week? Yeah. Yeah. It was quite easy. Um, uh, the only thing I messed up, honestly, is I tried to OG Kylo, um, uh, Carthon Nasty team, mm-hmm. and um, I didn't. I wasn't even like worried about the match, so I didn't really do any mod checking or anything like that. But like, their Zalbar was modded in such a way that it was like they had crit avoidance on it, so it was like I couldn't get through it. And um, I don't know if there was actually any tenacity on there because it, it didn't seem like we were landing any healing immunities either. But yeah, it was just like we could just not get through this this uh, Zalbar, which I, which has happened before. And, and like anyone that does the OG Kylo solo thing with against Old Republic can tell you like if modded properly, that team will beat your your Kylo team. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that's what ha- happened there. They actually did end up eventually. I thought we were just going to time out because I couldn't get through. They actually did eventually like kill kill my guy. I like think like what, twenty or thirty seconds or something like that left to go, but uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, that, that again shows goes to show you like if you understand modding, you understand a lot in this game, mm-hmm. um, and, and so that's really cool to see. But yeah, other than that, like I think he 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 struggled with my defense, and I I do think he will clear me, but um, it wasn't even close. Like when the it was like a sixty or seventy point difference. I want to say so. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, we'll we'll kind of do just a quick cursory and then we'll do the 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 ending bits. Um, kind of the uh highlight, the biggest like either MVP team or a team that tripped you up the most this week. Um, anything that kind of stood out to you. I imagine probably something from Fatals from yeah. that one is fatal. Um, okay, so the one that I tripped up against most um was his uh CLS. 2PO and C3PO, which I, funny enough is one that I set for him and he struggled on it too. Mm-hmm. Um, but the way that he mod again, modding, um, the way he modded his was with a ton of tenacity. So that way you couldn't grievous it with the target okay. lock stuff because um, the stat sharing and then redistributing out all that tenacity again. Um, so that was interesting um, and very difficult for me to get through. Uh, I kind of had to craft my way through that one. And then, like, one on defense that, like, obviously that one did well, but then one on defense that really did well, too, was uh, one that I took from end-all, be-all, uh, actually, funny enough, 
was a Asajj lead. And this is the one that he five tapped. Uh, Asajj, oh, excuse me, uh, Asajj lead with uh, Zombie and New Gunray. Um, it was very interesting to see play out. When you look at it, you're like, ah, I don't know, man. That doesn't seem like anything. Doesn't sound like on paper it should work. Right. But I'm telling you, it is insane. Like, I, if you don't have the right lineup in there, you, yeah, it's not going to be a fun match for you. Hmm. Um, so, Interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So big right. credit to end all on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and obviously, we're getting ready to go into week two, three, three. Yep. What, what, are some, what are some things that you're working on? Um, any cards in your hand you want to show out before you go against another fatal or anyone like that? <laughs> uh don't expect my don't expect the same defenses that i placed in week one that is that is one thing that i try to do like i try to make it to where the guys that check my previous week they try to go in with their counters and then they're like wait a second this This isn't what i was (laughs) yeah this is what he does (laughs) so i try to stay true to that but yeah like we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes but any like specific characters or teams or anything like that that you're that you're putting some work into or maybe trying to boost up or anything? Uh, not necessarily. Right now, I'm honestly just kind of in a hold mode on like all upgrades. Like I'm just trying to figure out like, hey, is there a Mando thing that's happening soon? You know, like I'm I'm kind of in a horde mode right now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I just got my third GL, so that like took a lot from that. So I'm just kind of like collecting and gathering and <laughs> and waiting for the next thing. Like whether that's sith eternal or um mando or whatever the heck they have like in store for us um that's kind of like my game plan right now and we'll just kind of go with what we got with 3v3 all righty uh neil you 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 round out the questions we know we know the last question obviously yeah the last question is where can people find you my friend uh, you guys can find me on Twitch uh, at twitch.tv ando 1990. And then you can also find me on YouTube if you just type in ando 90. And then sometimes I think if, I think if you just type in that, you'll be fine. But in case you guys can't or you see someone else like uh, it's SWGOH, uh, that's where you can find me on YouTube. All righty. Uh, and uh, any anything kind of around the corner to kind of expect on your channel or anything? uh not too much honestly just just more a little bit above average gameplay man like (laughs) (laughs) and hopefully uh trying to beat ram bam right yeah 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 well that's a given that's a given i mean like we're we're, we've already got that in the bag i mean yeah oh that's fucking talk (laughs) (laughs) all right ando dude it's been a pleasure having you on buddy yeah Uh, thank you guys hopefully week two uh pans out better you th- yeah. a three and zero oh instead of a two and one. Hopefully you don't yeah. get, go against uh, someone like Playbook again. I know. I'm 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 due for a good week. Like that's all I'll say. Like I, I want a good week where I just like I look at my competition. I'm like oh yeah, like we're gonna take this week. <laughs> <laughs> we got this. <laughs> exactly. uh, all right. But uh, guys, uh, on the other side of uh, a highlight from his round two battles, um, we will be back with our thoughts and acknowledgments. So uh, yeah, we'll see you all over there. Okay, I'm going to immediately throw this onto you. Let's go ahead and taunt. Oh my goodness. We're 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 totally gonna time out here. <laughs> we're totally gonna time out here. <laughs> Unless we can just ultimate them to death. Go, 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 go. Come on. (laughs) Oh, this might have been a mistake. No. Come on. (laughs) No. No. And welcome back to the show. It's time for thoughts and acknowledgments. And uh, yeah, Ando's 
clip there was just like, oh, 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 oh. Poor Ando. Poor Ando with a timeout. Oh, you poor, can't win them all. Poor. Can't win them all, can you? And it was fatal. So, uh, you know. That it was. Probably modded wow. up to its eyeballs, that team. Anyway, it's the end of the show. I hope you've been... We only do some thoughts acknowledgements, but uh, this is one of those few episodes we don't actually have anything to acknowledge. No follows or anything like that to, to mention, so... Yeah. yeah. Although we, we could mention briefly, I, 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 would like to, I would like to point out the... Um, if you have not read it yet, go and read the post on the forums. Oh Be my god. Go and read the post on the forums because oh my gosh. the... I'm the new character that but put it this way the farming progression the farming account. progression there are going to be next season next season there are going to be a lot of competitors because i will include myself in that that are going to have very fluffy bottoms because there's characters that you're going to be able to I mean, farm you can farm them but doesn't mean you have to unlock them yet or star yeah. them well why would you waste your time farming them if you're not going to unlock them have them done and ready I, I didn't when i did my jkr grind for virginia at Revan, i didn't unlock half the characters until i was done yeah like i when i when i got the final shard on mission i said let's go and unlock them all yeah well i, I I'm, i'll definitely be going for krennic because i have not farmed krennic and um if if he's going to be double dropping, I will be farming. I will definitely be farming him just so that I've got everything needed for Seep at seven stars. Because he's the only character that I need at seven stars, so I can go for Seep. So uh, yeah. yeah, I'm still not going to go for Slacker or Ray, but <laughs> screw them. You're going for a Luke, but if you can also go for Seep, yeah, exactly. Really I'll go. For, I'll, I'll be going for JML. So if, you know, if and I would never if if. I would never have gone for Krennic if I, you know, didn't think mm -hmm. I was going to be out farming twice as fast. So, uh, yeah, I, I will be taking full, full advantage of that and fluffing my bottom. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just I'm just the smaller account like, hey, I can finally speed up farms on Darth Revan and gas and get a Sith trio going. Oh, my gosh. That'd be uh, nice for you. That'd be nice oh, for it's you. Gonna be, it's going to be wonderful for me. Um. But yeah, uh, Neil. Anything? Else, anything going on? No, no. Um, just the uh, just the usual, mate. Just the usual GACs throughout the week. Uh, the usual flagship show on Friday. Then of, I'm not sure if the Lego Legacy Heroes unbox is going to be on Thursday or on Saturday this week. Um, and then we will have the Mandalorian watch party on Sunday, followed closely by Talking Mando with going nerdy how about yourself mate um well we uh i i did a financial purchase before the start of the show today uh, mm -hmm. getting the new assassin's creed game valhalla yeah um, i've seen that in I, I i've seen upper echelon gamers streaming that it looks sweet i'm i'm very excited like these these newer rpg style Assassin's creed games right up my alley oh man love them um uh, but yeah so I'll probably be giving a look at Valhalla this week, um, having some fun with that, stabbing people like a proper Viking. But um, we've got uh, a couple stuff going on around the bend as well. Um, Biscuit and I will be doing our usual um, deal of our MSF stream um, probably on Saturday this week. Um, and then bringing some stuff around there, uh, working on some stuff on my end and busy with life as usual. So mm -hmm. <sighs> tell me about it, man. It's awful. I love everything else I do. <laughs> Anyways, um, I think that's pretty much about it for today. Yeah, that's yeah, good. that's it for this week, mate. Yep. All right, guys. As always, we appreciate everything that uh, you know the support that's uh, shown the show. If people stick around, and watch us uh, talk about a bunch of numbers and people and getting holds and trying to figure out just what the crap is happening here sometimes. And uh, yeah, we are nearing. We're getting. Or the the end is in sight. We are uh, starting off the second to last month. And uh, man, it's getting there. The end is getting here. Getting exciting. Season finale is in just a couple of weeks. A matter of 
seven weeks, weeks. From now? We're a week 17. Week 17, but like seven or eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Seven, like seven actual. more weeks. Seven more weeks. Yep. Yep. It's going to be exciting. This is going to be fun. I got to get those five-year-olds working on this dunce cap. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, guys. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Seriously. We will see you all next Tuesday, as always, for another episode of GA Center. Until then, take care. Be nice to each other, dadgummit. Be good people. Have fun. Take some breaks. Be good to yourself. Y'all take care. Have a good night. Neil, hit that button. You got it, mate. Ta-ta for now, folks. See y'all.